What's happening, everybody? Welcome back to Game Day with Trey. Of course, this is your host, Trey. And today, we're going to go ahead and talk about this NFL Monday night matchup between the New York Jets and the San Francisco 49ers. All right, so this game right here will be played uh, September 9th, 8.15 p.m. East Coast time in Santa Clara, California. Odds are San Francisco by four. Total is set at 43. Uh, the line has since moved on that over-under. It's now at 43 and a half uh, in some places, and it's still at four uh, over on the Hard Rock right now, guys. All right, so let's go ahead and let's talk about this matchup real quick. All right, so we also what ha saw what happened to the Jets last year. Newly acquired veteran quarterback Aaron Rodgers went down with an injury in the first quarter of the first game on the fourth play of the, of the game. All right, and the team never recovered. All right, uh, New York did manage to go seven and ten overall. However, mostly on the strength of a great defense uh, and wrestling with what they were going to do at quarterback the whole time. All right, now uh, preseason doesn't necessarily translate to success or failure in the regular season, but for what it's worth, the Jets won all three of their exhibition games. All right, and those came at a 20 to 17 win over the Washington Commanders, a 15 to 12 win over the Panthers, and a 10 to 6 win over the New York Giants. All right, now uh, we talk about San Francisco, uh, well, who's on, who's the team on the other side of the field. All right, uh, they had a great campaign last season. But it ended in disappointment. San Francisco went 12 and 5 overall, then won the divisional uh, playoffs over the Green Bay Packers and the NFC Championship versus the Detroit Lions. In the Super Bowl versus Kansas City Chiefs, however, the 49ers did fall short 25 to 22 in overtime. All right, now the 49ers ended up going 1-1-1 one, one, and one in the preseason action. All right, uh, get a taste of each possible outcome. San Francisco lost 17-13 to to the Tennessee Titans in the opener, then beat the uh, New Orleans Saints 16-10. to And in the final, the Niners settled for the tie with a 24-24 tie <laughs> against the Raiders, guys. All right, now uh, let's, uh, let's look a little bit deeper into this matchup. All right, first and foremost, normally you don't even talk about this in week one, but we kind of got to talk about it right now, all right, because there are some injuries that we need to be talking about, uh, especially when you talk about on San Francisco's side, all right, now, uh, but we will start with the Jets. So, with the, with the Jets, Tyron Smith, the offensive lineman, is battling an undisclosed injury, and it remains to be seen if he will face off against the 49ers on Monday. That's definitely major news, all right, because uh, they're trying to revamp that offensive line, considering how bad the offensive line was last year. Last year, I believe they were like 29th worst offensive line in the NFL. Uh, some people are picking them to be like a top five offensive line this year. I got to see it to believe it. Uh, I, yeah, I got I got to see that to believe that, man. All right, uh, other notable injuries for the Jets, uh, Mike Williams, his knee is probable. Uh, Williams is hampered with a knee injury, but is expected to play against the 49ers on Monday. Uh, is there anybody else? Uh, of course, we all, we all know what's going on with Hassan Reddick. He, he still ain't showed up, but that's because they just, he just ain't decided to pay the man. You know, I don't know who trades for somebody and then doesn't pay him, but, you know, that's what the Jets do. You know what I mean? Now, when you talk about the 49ers... 49ers got several injuries you got to look out for, too. First and foremost, uh, Jawan Jennings is questionable. He's hampered by an oblique injury, and his status for the game for, against the Jets is up in the air. Uh, another person to pay attention to, Fred Warner, is questionable. Uh, he is managing a foot injury, and it's unclear if he'll take the field either. Uh, then, you know, Christian McCaffrey, you know, he's questionable as well with a calf injury, and it's uncertain if he'll play. Uh, Hufanga is recovering from a knee ACL injury. He's questionable and is questionable to play against the Jets on Monday, but I'm I, I'm pretty sure he's not going to play. Uh, but, you know, they got a questionable, so he could play. All right, and Leonard Floyd, questionable as well, battling a, uh, a knee injury, uh, and it is undetermined if he will face the Jets on Monday. Of course, we all know Ricky Pearsall got shot, so he definitely ain't going to be out there. Dre Greenlaw still recovering from that eight, uh, from that Achilles, so he's on the IR. Uh, Drake Jackson, uh, he's definitely still out on the IR, be idle. 
uh, due to a knee injury. And uh, yeah, I believe that's it for the injuries as far as injury is concerned between those two teams. All right, so last season, okay, the New York Jets averaged 15.8 points per game. That was the 29th worst offense in all of the NFL. And a lot of people want to blame that on Zach Wilson. A lot of people want to blame that on the offensive line. I'm telling you, I like I said, they got to show me, man. They got to show me. All right, Aaron Rodgers, everybody says Aaron Rodgers is one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. All right, I say he's a great quarterback. I don't say he's one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. Uh, why do I say that? Just for full disclosure, man, he, man got one Super Bowl. Man got one Super Bowl. He don't show up in the playoffs. Like, you can't be on that list. You, can, you can't be above Joe Montana. You can't be above Peyton Manning. You can't be, you can't even be above Eli. You know what I mean? But uh, I digress, man. We're going to leave that alone right now. That's for uh, once he retires and all that stuff there when they start, try to start putting him on Mount Rushmore, which they already been doing. Forget that. Anyway, so Jets, they averaged 15.8 points per game last year. Uh, that was 29th worst. San Francisco had the number four overall defense in the NFL last year, only giving up 18.8 points per game. All right, now when you look at uh, in the inverse, San Francisco's offense averaged 28.6 points per game. That was the number two offense in all the NFL. The Jets got the number 10 defense in all the NFL, only giving up 20.9 points per game. All right, as far as third down conversions concerned last season, third down conversions, the Jets were the worst team in the NFL at converting on the third down. And San Francisco's defense really wasn't too much better, man. They was a 27th. Uh, worst defense against opponents on third down and allowing them to convert so uh definitely want to pay attention to that man also want to pay attention to red zone scoring jets last year which we know it's last year but still nonetheless jets scoring last year they were the worst scoring team in the red zone in all the nfl ranked 31st 32nd and san francisco was ranked 11th okay now uh, on defense, so uh, their defense actually was stand up in the paint. They only they stop you 52.54 uh, percent of the time that you get down there. But uh, anyway, so we look on we look at it the other way. Uh, San Francisco uh, third down conversion on uh, offense. They were the number four total third down conversion offense in all the NFL, whereas the Jets they were middle of the pack at 12. You know, so uh, that is definitely something that will translate. Uh, into this season but you know Jets the Jets red zone defense was pretty good last year man now even though San Francisco was number one team in the red zone last year scoring on 68% of the chances that they got in the red zone the, the Jets the Jets were the number seven overall defense in the red zone all right and that's something to really pay attention to especially since you know that they basically got all the same players back on defense, man. Like, the, the Jets keep a good defense. Robert Sala got a good defense. It, it's just it, the offense is questionable. Even with uh, Aaron Rodgers' homeboy over there, man, that, that stuff is questionable, okay? Uh, it seems to me like the only person who can run that offense is Aaron Rodgers, <laughs> or at least that's what it looks like from the outside. We'll see. We'll see tonight. Anyway, so let's go ahead and let's get a little bit deeper into this. So the uh, last 10 times the Jets were on the field going back to last season, all right, uh, Jets are 3-7 and seven straight up, 2-8 and eight against the spread, and 4-6 four, oh, four and six, uh, as far as over-under is concerned. So that's 4 to the over, 6 to the under. Uh, yeah, they were... Then when you look at San Francisco, San Francisco 7-3 and three in the last 10 games they touched the field. Uh going back to last season they're four and six against the spread all right and they're seven to the over two to the under with one push in their last 10 games as well and all this includes the playoffs so they got some dogs in there you know they got the rams in there they got green bay in there they got detroit and kansas city and if you go back before that they played baltimore and they played uh who else they played philly and they played seattle so that last 10 games was was definitely not not something you just sneeze at, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> they played some real dogs in the last 10 games, man, and still came out on the right end. 
All right, but let's look head-to-head. -head. So head-to-head, -head, these two teams since 2008 have only played each other four times. San Francisco runs it 3-1. to one. Uh, San Francisco runs it 3-1 to one against the spread. And it's been one over and three unders uh, when these two teams meet. Last time these two teams met was back in 2020. Of course, none of these players uh, were there, <laughs> at least when you're talking about the, uh, the Jets. All right, because they're all way, way too young to have been there back in 2020. But uh, the 49ers went from 31 to 13 back then, just so you know. You know what I mean? To give you some basis. Okay? But uh, so for some facts about the game, uh, nine of the 49ers' last 10 games on week one have gone under the total points line. And seven of the Jets' last eight games against NFC West opponents have gone under the total points line. All right, now, uh, as far as some uh, player prop information, uh, Brock Purdy has recorded 252-plus passing yards in each of the last nine appearances in California. Christian McCaffrey has recorded 78-plus rushing yards in each of his last eight appearances in the West Coast. Christian McCaffrey has recorded 128 rushing-plus receiving yards in each of his last seven appearances on the, on the West Coast. Brandon Ayuk has recorded 55-plus receiving yards in each of the 49ers' last six regular season games against AFC opponents. Brock Purdy has recorded 22-plus completions in three of the last four appearances with the 49ers as favorites. Brock Purdy has also thrown two or more touchdowns in four of the last five regular season game appearances. Uh, Chris McCaffrey has scored at least one touchdown in 20 of the last 21 appearances of the uh, on the West Coast. And Chris McCaffrey ranked first in the NFL in rushing yards last season with 1,459 yards, man. So when you're talking about the Jets and a couple player props that could be some fact stuff type stuff for them, all right, Mike Williams has scored at least one touchdown in each of, the, of his five previous September appearances with his team as a road underdog. Remember, that was with him as uh, a Charger, guys. All right, now Aaron Rodgers has thrown two or more touchdowns in nine of the last ten appearances with his team as an underdog against NFC opponents. Remember, that goes back to him with Green Bay because he hasn't played with the Jets for real. Uh, Brees Hall has recorded 126-plus rushing yards and re plus, uh, plus rushing and receiving yards uh, in four of the Jets' last five games. Uh, that's definitely something to take notice of. Uh, Aaron Rodgers has recorded 255 plus passing yards in four of the last five September appearances as road underdogs against NFC opponents. Uh, Aaron Rodgers has recorded 16 plus rushing yards. That's not happening. All right. Uh, yeah, I'm not looking for that for him to be rushing the ball. Uh, Mike Williams has recorded 69 plus receiving yards in each of the last eight September road appearances. All right. And then uh, some matchup facts, guys. The 49ers ranked tied for first. In the NFL in interceptions last season with 22. 49ers ranked first in the NFL in red zone percentage, like I told you. And then the Jets ranked first in the NFL in total punt yards last season. <laughs> All right. And uh, the Jets also ranked 32nd in the NFL in third down percentage, just like I told you earlier, man. Uh, th this should be a pretty fun matchup on Monday night. Uh, San Francisco is kind of potent offense. Uh, the Jets' very talented defense will be very interesting. Uh, definitely looking forward to seeing that matchup in the trenches. Uh, New York ranked 13th in the NFL last season with 22.4 points per game on the road. Uh, depending on how the Jets' offense performs, that may or may not be enough. All right. And then uh, when you're speaking of the Jets' offense, this will be our first real look at them with a functional Aaron Rodgers under center. Now, there are plenty of variables involved in Jets versus the 49ers defense, so it's tough to know how to feel, guys. But you got to understand that this is the type of game that will pretty much set the tone for the season. And I know it's, only, it's week one, it's game one, all right? But at the end of the day, there's been a lot of talk coming out of New York as far as the turmoil that they're facing due to Aaron Rodgers' lackadaisicalness of uh, showing up in practices and, and, and how he actually has been performing. Now, uh, yeah, do I smell blood in the water with that? Of course I do, man, because when you throw off the continuity of the team, 
and you are putting yourself above the team, usually the team's going to leave, leave you out to dry. Now, this is Aaron Rodgers. This is a Hall of Fame quarterback. This is uh, one of the greatest quarterbacks in the league right now, uh, if you want to say that. You know what I mean? And wherever you want to put him on your mountain. But uh, if, if you even think he belongs on a mountain. But uh, at the end of the day, man, he's still going up against one of the greatest defenses in the NFL. On top of having that patchwork offensive line that he's got, I know they're supposed to be better. But, man, I like I said, I got to see it. I got to see it. All right, so this line was, was at the 49ers minus 6.5 at one point in time. This line has moved to the 49ers minus 4. It's been bet down. Uh me I'm not sure if I really like the the line you know what I'm saying uh, I'm definitely feeling the under the 43 and a half I'm, I'm on that okay like I'm definitely on that might buy a couple points just to keep it safe you know move it back to what it was at, uh, which was 45 and a half earlier this week or earlier last week uh, and I'll probably lean I'm going to lean with the 49ers, man. Uh, I'm going to lean with the 49ers minus 3.5 or minus 4. Uh, I think the 49ers will take this game. I think the defense is better. I think their offense is better. I think they got a better quarterback. Yeah, I said it. I think Brock Pur Purdy is better than Aaron Rodgers, okay, at this present time in his career. It just it is what it is, you know. Uh, we'll see later if, if Brock's ever, ever able to get a Super Bowl ring and, and you know, be on that same level as Aaron Rodgers uh, for the long for his career. But at the end of the day, at this point in time, Brock Purdy is a, a better quarterback than Aaron Rodgers, and he's in a better system than Aaron Rodgers is in. Man, I can't never, ever, ever, ever doubt doubt Shanahan unless it's in the Super Bowl and he's up by 28 points. Then, you know, I, I, I'll look around and, and wonder if he's going to be able to complete this thing and, 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 and win the game, you know, and coach the game to a win. But if it ain't the Super Bowl, man, last I checked, Shanahan, Shanahan way better than Robert Sala, okay? So, I, I mean, y'all can put it how you want to. Take it how you want to, man. I'm rocking with the 49ers. You know what I mean? Uh, and I definitely love the under, man. But I don't know. Y'all let me know in the comments how y'all feel. Uh, I just can't see any other way that this can go outside of that. You know what I mean? Like, I just not not with my money anyway. All right? Not with my money. But I don't know. Y'all let me know what y'all feel in the comments. Please like, subscribe. Go ahead and uh, and and. Be interactive with the comments, guys. Let's let's let, we can go back and forth and talk about some things. If you guys don't agree with me, man, you know what I mean. But I'll see you at the window. Y'all have a blessed day and stay safe. Peace.